a lot of people are asking me, hey, can we split up the deposits? Can we pay in different things? You gotta grab the link. Sorry, go back. Go to the Zoom. What's in this? Or and we're live. What's up, Facebook? Yeah. Happy Friday, everybody. What the fuck? Oh my gosh. Right, here, Zoom is so, confusing us. So what the fuck are we doing here? Yeah. All right, you uh, yeah. intro, and I will get our guest. Well, shit, I don't even know if we can. I, I, how do how do I look at this motherfucker? I think <laughs> we're, the good. we're good. We're good. I think the camera's off here. <laughs> Anyways, whatever. We're gonna get our guest here. We're getting him on board. Uh, as he's, as you guys heard, we're having some technical difficulties today. What's up? How do I see all of all of the screens? <laughs> what screen? Uh, so Chris is not a uh, Chris is not Apple. a Mac user, so he he's still learning how to do all this shit. It's all good. Um, let me see. Where am I? Fuck. You see, that's kind of weird. We need to move that a little bit. There we go. Just a little tiny bit. So, hey, what's up, guys? We are the AZ Flip Guy. Ain't that a motherfucking yeah, bitch? Chop I that. I couldn't fucking say it right without the camera being on me perfectly. But we are the AZ Flip Guys. That is Cashflow Chris. I am what's Cashflow up? Creator. We are just two ordinary guys doing extraordinary things, talking about real estate, mindset, and everything in between. And one of the things that I've been saying a lot from uh, different shows that I've been on, talking to my mentoring students and everything else, is just that you, you're either going to be one of two people. You're going to be somebody that stopped by anything or somebody that is going to be stopped by nothing. And here at the AZ Flip Guys, we choose to be the latter. We choose to be stopped by nothing. So it took us like fucking 15 minutes or so to get our fucking camera going. How do you but paste that? Paste that link and send it. Where? Here? Yeah. There to your to yeah. you this is sent to you yep okay send it all right bryce we're coming for you man <laughs> do you want me to send this to him or no nah, we're good i got it all right fuck it all right guys so as i said we are the az flip guys just two ordinary guys doing extraordinary things and we got our boy bryce who is going to be joining us here so i actually met bryce um i met him in dallas i was I was out there to go speak at a, I was out there to go speak at an event and um, he, we, we went a few days before because we needed to drive out to Arkansas to take a look at our apartment complex anyway. Yep. Plus we, Propelio was having their event. Exactly. And we and definitely wanted to hit that one. Since we always talk about networking, 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 we decided to, you know, actually follow our own fucking advice. And we went to the Propelio networking event, which if you guys are in the DFW area, highly, highly suggest you check out. Um, we did meet, uh, we met Bryce out in the parking lot, actually, and we had a nice conversation with him. Uh, but there was a shit ton of people there. there was, what do you say, four or five hundred people? I mean, there was a shit ton of fucking people yeah man it now, was a who's who too like, yeah. you're like i know that guy i know that facebook guy i know that guy <laughs> now i'm sure that part of it had to do with open bar and free food free chick-fil-a yeah, uh so right. yeah i mean i'm sure that 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 had something to do with it <laughs> nonetheless though it was an awesome 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 event uh this one they're having another one here sometime may i think may 12th or something along those lines right. and uh if, if you guys don't know our good friend troy forward is going to be in there oh, yeah. uh, troy is the fucking man troy knows man troy's done so much and he's very unassuming uh if you don't know who he is you know you just kind of would just brush him off that's just oh look at that guy over there and then we got our boy Corey peterson yeah who's, our mentor who's a whole different fucking he's a different type of loud mouth like i am so you'll, <laughs> you'll know Corey. <laughs> straight from the bayou and, and he's in the fucking he's in the multi-family industry as we are and uh, he's just an awesome awesome individual somebody that i have personally known for many many fucking years uh we've known each other back from wholesaling to fixing and flipping to mo moving forward to multifamily. i've been to his house a couple of times uh know his wife awesome awesome individual yeah, so man dfw is getting some of arizona's best yeah no DFW shit show up and then they got and i i complete i forget off the top of my head but they got two other really big big uh people that are going to be there at the same time speaking that day so if you guys are in the dfw area if you guys are driving distance from the dfw that's a dallas fourth worth area for you guys that don't know over in texas highly highly recommend that you make the trek go there uh, because it was a who's who and you know one of the funny things about that fucking thing was i was walking around and people were recognizing me <laughs> either from the az flip guy show or from the time that we were on propelio yep and, and the <laughs> best one was i was outside 
So I'm outside and I'm fucking smoking weed, right? I'm, I'm, I, I, I was able to attain some medical marijuana to uh, fill, fulfill my prescription needs. It's illegal in <laughs> Texas, though. I don't know how well, that happened. Hey, whatever. I was, I, I was able to fulfill my prescription needs. So I was outside. I was smoking. And then I just coughed really, really loud. Some guy walked by. He's like, hey, man, that smells real good. I was like, thank you, man. He's like, dude, is that BP? <laughs> <laughs> So he runs, get closer. He's like, oh, shit, BP, man, I've been following you for years. You're fucking awesome. It's amazing. (laughs) So, guys, the power of networking. One of the people that we met at the event was our guest today. Uh, Actually, not only was he at the event, but he was actually a guest speaker at the event that I was in Dallas for, which is the Kingdom Connect event. And he was there the whole time with his son, which was awesome. And I'll let him share a little bit more about his son and that story. But it was just cool to see a, um, a a different story that was still relatable, that was still um, understandable from even if you would never, ever go through anything like he did uh, to what he's been able to accomplish. And, and, and as somebody who's a father myself, Chris is also a father, uh, seeing the relationship that Bryce had with his son. That was something that was awesome. So anyway, Bryce, uh, why don't you let everybody know who you are? Uh, why don't let let everybody know what it is that you are currently doing, and then we can get this show started. Man, man, oh man! Thank you, guys. My name is Bryce McKinley, Coach Sharpen. Now you know what time it is. I'm super excited to be here, you guys. I love you guys, man. We we hit it off actually. Uh, I don't know if I was the guy in the parking lot that was like, man, that smells good. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> but we did meet. We, guy, but <laughs> I know I'm kidding. <laughs> I, I we did meet in the parking lot before the the barrage, and and I just want to say thank you guys for for stopping and and chatting with me, and and so. Man, a little bit about myself, you guys, for those that uh, don't know who I am. My name is Bryce McKinley. I'm an international speaker, motivational speaker, host selling real estate coach and master salesperson. I've been in real estate now for uh, just that, just over seven years now and really got into this business by accident. You know, I had uh, a lot of tragedies in my life and uh, I'm sure we're going to dig into that today, but man, I got into this business with uh, $32 in my name, sleeping in my car, and over the last, you know, five and a half, six years in a partnership, let me just clarify that, in a partnership, been honored and blessed to do over $154 million, I think a little over that, um, in wholesaling. And that's all I do. I don't claim to know everything, but I can wholesale like a mamma jamma. Wholesale like a mamma That's the thing that we, one of the things that we preach here on the AZ flip guys is don't try to be a jack of all trades. Just be a master of one. There's a series that I listen to, which is all about mental training and it's all about the mind. But the, one of the things that I love the most is he talks about meeting a Chinese monk and the guy is from the Shaolin temple. And this guy is, you know, trying to show off how many different strikes he knows. And the old Shaolin monk is like, you know what? Shut, shut the fuck up. Here at the Shaolin (laughs) Temple, we have one saying and that we stick by, which is, I do not fear the man that knows 10,000 punches that has only practiced them once in his life. I do fear the man that knows one punch that has practiced that 10,000 times in their life. So being a master of one thing, and, you know, that's one of the things that a lot of people have a very, very hard time getting into is, you know, we as entrepreneurs, as people, go-getters, we have the shiny object syndrome. We see opportunity everywhere. So because we see opportunity everywhere, we want a piece of every fucking pie. We want a piece (laughs) of every action. We should be doing all this shit, but you should be focused on one thing. Now, Bryce, before uh, we continue on with you, I wanted to, uh, because we're starting late, because we're everything, man, I completely off track. So if you guys are listening to us on a podcast, make sure that you download this. Make sure that you give us a five-star review and make sure that uh, make sure that you put some comments on there if you have any questions about this. However, you can catch us on iTunes, you can catch us on Podbean, you can catch us on Spotify. But if you want to sh- join the show live, just like we have many 
of people. We have our good people, Mr. Greg Cook. We got Maya. We got Dusty Helms. We got Charles, Charlie Sund Sullivan. We got Josh Castro. We got our boy Armando Gloria. Uh, man, some of our regulars. We got our boy Cyrus all the way from the Philippines. Nice. Uh, if you guys want to join like them, if you guys want to comment, if you guys want to ask questions, you know, we'll be able to ask questions of a sales master today. So if you guys are if you guys are hearing us on the replay, if you guys are watching us on YouTube on a replay or catching the replay on Facebook, make sure that you join us every Friday live at noon Arizona time, AZ Flip guys. And if we're ever late like we are today, we'll make a post about it just like I did letting you know that we'll be a little bit late because we do like to be punctual. We do like to be consistent. And that's one thing they hear with the AZ Flip guys. If we don't, Bryce, dude, if we don't start right at fucking 12, Without fail, we'll get a message or two. Hey guys, is everything going on? You know, <laughs> how's it going over there? <laughs> you have you have that problem too. I get it. I get it. Yeah, we're good. Okay. Awesome, awesome. So anyway, Bryce, uh, you are currently you've currently wholesaled quite a bit of deals. You you do um, you do some sales stuff. But why don't we get why don't we take this back a little bit? Why don't you tell us about how you got started into the business. What were you doing before you got into real estate? Because I, really like I really like to ask that question about all of our guests. And the reason why is I'm constantly reminding our audience, our viewers, that every master was once a disaster. You know, it doesn't matter where you start from. It doesn't matter how bad you have it. It doesn't matter how shitty your situation is right now, how crappy your job is, how much your life fucking sucks you can always change something about it. So what was that you were doing before you even decided to move into real estate? Yeah, man, I, I appreciate you asking. So, man, BP, I was, I, I had done a lot of things, but one thing that I've mastered is the conversation with anybody. You see, I've got a very simple five-step process to a conversation where I know we're going to dig into that. That was kind of the header that we were promoting. Yep. But, I will tell you, man, I've done a little bit of everything, but it all had to do with selling a product or service. And so, you know, my entrepreneur spirit in me started out when I was, you know, eight years old in Northern Illinois, you have to be 10 to have a paper route. And at eight years old, I got fired for the first and the last time of my life. I, I refused to work for people. I, I didn't want to work for anybody. I wanted to just be, hustle and, and do that. Right. Um, one of the things that we talked about briefly before we got on here was how I was raised and in the disciplines that I had in my life. And I grew up in a very cult like religion. And I didn't realize that there was a big world out there. There was so much more out there than what I had been living eight, nine, 10 times a week. And when I say that, it's like at this church, like six, seven days a week, you know, sometimes 10 when there's revival, it was crazy. Well, and, I, and before you move forward with that, you know, I was talking to you before we got started that I was brought up in a similar way, not to the extreme that you were, but definitely brought up in a similar way. And something that you just said right now just triggered a memory, which was you didn't even know that there was different. The world was different. You just, yeah. because you were brought up in this world, especially as a child, you believe that this was the only way and whatever, whichever way you were brought up as a child, you know, you may not have been brought up as extreme as Bryce or myself, but whichever way you were brought up, you believe that that was the way that that was the only way that everybody in the, in the world did the exact same thing. But, you know, back to what you were saying, Bryce, uh, and I've experienced, it took me a, a few years to realize, Oh my God, it's, it's a whole, different world out there you know there it's a this is just a small tiny section of of people we're talking about there's a whole whole different world out there so anyway you decided that you were not going to be participating in that at the age of eight you said i this is the last time that i get fired i don't <laughs> like that <laughs> yeah, so it's interesting you know and i'll get back to that eight-year-old boy and me and, and getting fired but it's interesting i i, I look at that you know, I want to win from everything. I want to be, you know, successful as they say, say, right, like fail forward, right? Fail forward. I, I look at that as an opportunity. It was really an opportunity for me to have some skills that I didn't know that I was aware of. And I just kind of had an aha moment listening to you say that. That's probably why I mastered the conversation. That's probably why I mastered wholesaling so quick. 
I don't claim to know anything else. I don't, I mean, I can run numbers for any other deal and know that it's probably that it's probably a sub two, a flip, a uh, buy and hold or whatever, but I don't have the capacity to know all the ins and outs, but I do know wholesale. And I know when I've got a damn good deal or when I need to turn it over to somebody like you guys, right? That said, I was eight years old and I got fired for the first time because I had to be 10. Well, if you don't know me, if you've never met me, I'm six foot five, I'm 250 pounds. I'm a big dude. And my route manager comes over in Texas. We say, bless her heart. It's like, <laughs> that means you're a fucking over, idiot. Right? <laughs> she came <laughs> over to hire me because she didn't do her paperwork ride. She knew I, she found out I was eight when I was trying to get paid a couple weeks in. And, uh, man, I, I convinced her. I'm like, Karen, her name was Karen. I'll never forget this lady. Karen, you thought that I was old enough. And obviously my parents thought that I could do a good job. Why don't we put the paper out in my dad's name? And if I do a good job, when I turn 10, will you give me five or six routes? Boom. Like I didn't realize it. Like I still get goosebumps thinking about it. Right. Like, <laughs> I didn't realize I was closing a deal right there at the table, the kitchen table with grown adults. What'd we have? What'd we do? We put it in my dad's name in like six or seven months. I had four or five routes. By the time I was 10, I had almost like seven or eight routes under my belt. I was the number one newspaper sales guy in my territory. I got all these awards. It was just crazy, right? Oh, ho hold on, man. So last week we had a guy, David, who this motherfucker had, had owns over 500 doors, multifamily. And yeah. he was able to accomplish that before the age of 23. He's now 23. Wow. Nonetheless, we were talking about his first deal. And technically, he wasn't old enough. I mean, he was 20. So he was legally an adult. But he didn't have the credit. Excuse me. He didn't have the financials. He didn't have the um, the credit lines. Yeah, he he's didn't in have college. all the stuff. He's a college kid. Yeah. <laughs> he, he didn't have all the stuff that he needed. So he basically did the exact same shit that you did when you were eight years old. Well, if we put it in his name, he's got all the shit that we need, right? So <laughs> if we put it on his name, then we can do something about that, right? Let's just move forward. And this goes back to how we started the show. Bryce, you may or may not have heard this because I don't know if you were joining us at this point, but I said that there's only two kinds of people. There's people that are stopped by things and people that are not stopped by things regardless of the challenge, regardless of the size, regardless of which way it's going to happen. So the people that are usually stopped by things, they would have said, oh, man, fuck, that sucks. Oh, well, that was a good I two. say the same thing, BP. I say the same thing. People are either interested or they're committed. It's exactly. the same thing. You can be interested in this stuff all day long, but if you don't get committed, you don't get sold out like my hashtags are, like, man, you're not going to have the success that you want if you won't do what others want, you know, or, well, or and that's, that's the thing is that people don't understand commitment. Everybody wants to be a real estate investor. Everybody wants to wholesale. Everybody wants to be in real estate. That doesn't mean shit. It's like when I talk to people and because you're, you wholesale, you would strictly understand this, but um, I'm not looking for fucking people that want to sell. I only want to talk to people that need to sell. Yeah, Everybody so. wants to sell. Everybody's like, oh, well, fuck, just throw me an offer and we'll see how it goes. No, fuck you, motherfucker. How about you tell me what you need because you're in the situation. And if you don't understand what I'm saying, then obviously you're not in the situation that I need to be talking to your ass with. <laughs> and for you listeners out there, I have a very simple word phrase that you can use to really eliminate those people. It, it goes like this, man, BP, I can appreciate that you want an offer. Heck, I know you want to get as much as you possibly can. I want to give you as much as I possibly can. But at the end of the day, I can only work with people that are serious about working with me. So tell me a little bit more about your property. And I go right back into the pain. I dig that knife. I twist it and pour salt on that shit. So now their current reality and their desired reality are two different things. And I'm the only one to bridge that gap. And we'll get into all that. We'll get into all that. So. And we will. And guys, just want to remind you, if you're watching us on the watch party, we've got quite a few people watching us. We actually got Roy Rocha saying, what's up, y'all? Just reminding you that if you are watching us on the watch party, I got a watch party. I'm sure Chris got a watch party. If you guys are watching us on the watch party, make sure that you comment and ask your questions. Uh, it doesn't show up here on the main thread. 
but we we do see it so then we'll be able to ask these questions for you yeah. to bryce bryce is a master make sure you guys host. share this out make sure you guys share this out man these guys are doing a wonderful service and providing a ton of value you guys thank share you. it out you know what thank you for reminding me once again today has been off kilter so i normally would have said i got you right. guys <laughs> <laughs> but guys we don't sell shit we don't promote shit we just add value to people so if you find this valuable we need you to share this on your page we need you to share this to the groups that you might find valuable if you're like hey man hey joe you've been talking about getting into wholesale you know why don't you check it out tag that motherfucker in the comments yep. let him come in share that shit to his page guys yep. as i said we're not selling anything we're not pitching anything all we're doing is just adding value that's our way to add value so we got quite a few people here on our uh, on our main thread we got amy shelton joining us we got josh castro said Luckily for us, we were late, gave him time to get a sandwich. <laughs> uh, we got Lamont, we got Isaiah Lee saying, what's up? We got Chris uh, Chris Chavez, Jeffrey Wiener in the house. Uh, we got Chris Chavez saying, that's how we get the REI results. Bryce is the best in the business. Yeah. That's what I'm Chris talking about. Business partner. Guys, and guys, if you have questions for these individuals, this is why we bring special guests here, because everybody is good at what they're good at. Everybody's a little bit different. Everybody's has a different philosophy. So what he says and how he says it may relate more to you, may relate better to you than the way that I would say it or than the way the cash flow Chris would say it. And by the way, if you're not following us on Instagram, make sure that you do at cash flow Chris, Chris with a K at cash flow creator over here. Make sure that you follow both of us on Instagram. We are constantly sharing our journey. We are constantly posting on our stories, let you know about our day, let you know about the stuff that we go through, uh, our family stuff, our regular day shit. But also, Chris was not walking new builds today. I have a fucking, you know what? I haven't uploaded those five or six or 10 videos that I took with you when we were walking that seven flex. So yeah, we got to, we got to get that up to. So Cyrus. anyway, guys, but that's all the stuff that you'll be able to find on our social media. So once again, make sure you follow at Cashflow Chris, Chris with a K. Make sure you follow me at Cashflow Creator, and that's both on Instagram. Uh, we got a uh, Bryce. What was your uh, Instagram handle? Coach Sharpen, baby. Coach, Coach Sharpen. 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 Oh yeah. So anyway, uh, we got. Oh shit, we got Ty Sherwood here. Says love these guys. Uh, they're funny. Fuck yeah, we are. Well, you know, and I, here's the thing: is I never try to be funny. I think what people find humorous is just somebody who's fucking genuine, <laughs> and somebody just says whatever the fuck they feel like saying <laughs> at this moment. But thank you, I do appreciate it. Um, I got John Villanueva who's saying, I can appreciate you wanting uh, me, uh, you wanting to know uh, what we can offer, Mr. Seller. That being said, let's get together and discuss details in person. What's a good time today or tomorrow to get together? That is awesome, man. And I love Scripts. the way that you said it. I love, this is something that happens when you master something. You start so you getting- about, Let me jump in here real quick. Cause, sure. cause we, we, on. we I can't haven't really that. gotten to how I got into real estate or what the past is. And I know we're going to get back to that, but he said something. This is, this is really key. This is Facebook. You guys are listening to Chris and BP for a reason. They talk about mastering that one thing and then taking it and going from there. Uh, I think it was John. I didn't, I don't know why I can't see the comments, but uh, John made the comment about getting that appointment. Mm -hmm. I've mastered this thing. I have not walked a property in over five and a half years. I've only met with three sellers my entire career, you guys. There's a very simple way to master things. It's finding someone that's already done it and follow and trust their process. So Exactly, guys. So if you have questions, you know, we are going to be getting into the specifics here. We're going to be getting into Bryce's five steps. But before we do that, I want to reiterate the whole fucking concept of listening to somebody who is actually where you're at. You know, you just said something right now, Bryce, but it's very similar to what my mentor tells us all the time, which is the easiest way to get across a minefield is to follow the footsteps of somebody who has successfully made it to the other side. That's so true. want to make sure that you're listening to the right people. But I also want to keep on pounding in the point. This is what happens when you go deep and not wide. This is what happens when you focus on just one thing as opposed to juggling a hundred million things. Oh, that looks good. 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 Because of my personality, because of my sales background, because of everything else, the amount of people that come to me and say, hey, man, you know, you would be really good for this. I say, yeah, you know what? I would be. But I'm not going to do myself or you that the, 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 the service 
of going and doing it because I'm not going to be able to focus 100%. But when you go deep as the way that you did with wholesaling, you're able to come up with all these different techniques. Now, before we actually talk about your techniques in general, I'm sure that, well, we haven't even got to the point of where you got to wholesaling. So why don't you tell us how you even got into wholesaling to begin with? Yeah. So between the age of 12 and 17, I was just an idiot. I was an absolute idiot. I was out, you know, gang banging, dope dealing, doing drugs, alcohol. I was not the greatest kid because my parents separated and I literally went from this goody goody church kid in the eyes of my peers, my, my other students or, or whatever that were my age. And I went from that kid to like everything I grew up believing was not true. And so I went off the deep end. I, I got into a lot of trouble. I was not a, a upstanding citizen by no stretch of the means. And, and uh, man, I, I had an opportunity. Let's just put it that way. I'm not going to go into all the nitty gritty, follow me and, and you'll, you'll find out uh, all those nitty gritty details. Do you mind if I tell them where our podcast is, man? Please. Yeah. Well, actually, not only do we not mind, we encourage that. Uh, at the end, we'll not, at the end we'll ask you to say that again, and then we'll put all that information on the show notes. So yeah, please go ahead. Perfect, perfect. So, man, I, if you guys want to follow me, my podcast. If you're watching this live, is not out yet. It will be out in the next week or so. And we've we've launched with a coach and a mentor that has top ten, top one hundred, top two hundred success, and we're going to be up there. He's already guaranteed that, and so you're not going to want to miss this. But uh, you can you can follow or check out our podcast on any of the platforms at Flipping Wholesaling Real Estate upside down because that's what we've done. I've completely flipped it upside down, doing it virtual, 10x and everything that we do. And so you want to go and follow me on all your uh, iTunes platforms there. So and and actually, you know, we'll we'll get back into how you got into real estate, but somebody in the watch party here Ty was asking and I don't need you to ask, I don't need you to answer this question right now cuz I'm sure we'll get into it. But this goes to your point about flipping the shit upside down, which is why does everybody want you to come take a look? to show my property that that's a very common thing where the the buyers the wholesalers think that they need to and the sellers think that they need to so obviously you came up with a way to get around that but this is this goes back to your concept of turning the con the concept of wholesaling upside down so yeah. if you guys are interested in checking out a little bit more about bryce make sure that you check out his podcast as i said at the end of the show uh he'll go ahead and say all the stuff again and then in the show notes we'll actually go ahead and Put it on there so you guys are catching a replay you guys are uh, downloading an episode on a podcast or whatever those things might be watching this on youtube you can see on the show notes and they'll have his information as to where you can find him and yeah your your story is very um <laughs> your story is very in-depth uh and if we go into the details of your story we'll be here for five hours yeah so uh, let me let me summarize it there I'm not ask you questions so please please summarize it though because <laughs> think, though I, and here's what I was going to say is I do believe that it, people need to know. Yeah. People yeah. need to know what the fuck was going on before you got into this industry. Because as I always remind them, every master was once a disaster. Absolutely. I, I couldn't and have said, it. said that a six, five gangbanger is very frightening. <laughs> so why don't you go from there? <laughs> well, I, Josh, I, I know I see that here I, man. I've been, Believe it or not, these scars are two teardrops that I had closed off. I tats that have been removed and covered up, man. I, you're absolutely right. It, it was scary. It was not only scary for others in my life, but it was scary for myself. And I had an opportunity. Uh, but before I go into that real quick, Lazara, I see you over here. She wants to know how to just get started. Man, go to wholesalingholygrail.com forward slash free download that eight step download that we're going to email you has made hundreds of thousands of dollars for people that don't need our services. They just take the eight steps and take action. Wholesalingholygrail.com forward slash free download. Now, with that said, so I had, I was facing some pretty hefty uh, criminal charges. Let's just yeah. say that to say the least paraphrasing this, I had a chance and an opportunity. And what that looked like was this. My uncle said, come work with me and I'm going to move you out of your environment. So that's what I went and did. And I started detailing cars, seeing the money in the car business that could be made. And I know that if I could hustle on the streets, 
I knew that I could do it legitimately. I just didn't know what that looked like. So I begged and begged my uncle for an opportunity. He finally, you know, it's kind of like the old, Hey coach put me in. He finally said, man, here's your shot. Well, what you guys don't know and realize is in Northern Illinois on the last week of December, there's always a freaking blizzard. It's like DUI setup time for the new year's, right? Like it's a ton of snow. You're already screwed. And in the car business, Good luck selling a car because nobody's coming to your lot. Mm -hmm. My uncle gave me a shot. I pulled out a phone book. Yes, they used to have this thing with numbers and names in it. You didn't have to skip trace people. Um, <laughs> I, I pulled out a phone book and I just started dialing. I didn't know what the hell I was doing, but I was going to get somebody in and I was going to sell a freaking car that day. I just so happened to get a hold of somebody that recognized my name. Didn't know it till he got into the dealership. He came in for an oil change that day. And when he did, I sold him his, I sold him a car. Now that said, he came back an hour later because he loved the process that I did naturally. I didn't know what that was. And he came back a couple hours later with his wife and I sold a second car, two cars. First day I was all in. I knew this was what I was going to do for the rest of my life. I was going to sell freaking cars. I didn't know there was anything else because this I was going to make in those two car deals, I think eight or nine grand total. Mm -hmm. I was in, I'm 17 years old. Put me in. Right. So my, 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 my coach, my uncle did that. And over the next two years, I became the number one car salesman in the world with Ford motor company, where most car guys, even to this day are selling 12 to 15 cars a month at 19. I had a two year average of over 50 cars a month by 22. I had a five year average of 70 plus cars a month. In between that time, I had an opportunity to go to Ford corporate. They do a walk around competition. It's a long story. It's a big competition, 500,000 contestants. Nobody's been there twice. I've been there four times. I've won it twice and I've got second place twice. I didn't know that I had what I had, but I loved what I was doing. And I loved the hundreds of thousands of dollars every month, hustling, selling cars. Now you might think that's crazy, right? I didn't know that I had what I had until my uncle got a phone call. Ford Motor Company, a couple executives sent out their recruits and they wanted to know who this kid was. And that's when I found out what a mentor was because I never had that in my life. So Ford Motor Company recruited me out of my dealership. I got a, a six figure contract with them plus commissions to travel the world. I was self-employed finally again. That was my dream to have my own business. I'm traveling all over the country teaching four dealerships, how to sell better or teach their staff as they open new stores. A couple of years later, I got a contract with Nissan, Toyota, GM. And by the age of 26, I had close to a $20 million in contracts between multiple dealers, uh, franchises. And I was traveling all the world teaching my process. So if you go into a Nissan or a Infinity or a Ford Mer Lincoln Mercury dealership today, from one of those stores that was formed between like 97 and 2005, that sales process is mine. And it, it's been truly, truly rewarding to go in and buy a vehicle and see it still in action to this day. And other franchises have adopted that five-step process that we're going to talk about today. Now, fast forward, you talked about that mess. You talked about that, uh, that, that tragedy, you know, and I forgot the term that you said. I'm going to have to go back and watch replay because I loved it, BP. But I say in my coaching, your mess is your message. And my mess became my message because I had to get into something else out of desperation. You see, in 2006, my wife lost a baby. Come to find out there was a DNR on them. And, and, and it was just a whole crazy mess. We went through lawsuits and, and it was supposed to be on another baby. We had a son that basically we found out the hard way was killed. And the next year and a half, my wife would lose her mind. And, and she, uh, she ended up taking her life. I'll never forget Friday, the 13th, June, 2008. I got a phone call. She was gone, man. She was raised in the same cult like experience I experienced and believe it or not, people doubted the reasons why I was with her, but I lost it. Her mom was my Sunday school teacher. Her and I had, you know, messed around at church, kind of like BP and I's off off camera, off conversation, that conversation. Yeah, bro. It happened. Right. Like we had done that even at church with a kid goofing around. Like 
I remember her dad. You guys, anyway. you guys that don't know, we have a B-roll section uh, <laughs> that we did before we started the interview where we were talking about our experiences growing up in those yeah. experiences. <laughs> so, <laughs> my face is blushing. Your face is blushing. I love it. So here's the deal. So <laughs> that's right. Uh, every master was once a disaster. And that's, that's exactly right. what it was. So I was a mess between 2008 and 2010. I went off the deep end. I got four DUIs within like 60 days, never drank really a whole heck of a lot. I did more cocaine in one night than most party animals ever do in their lifetime. And I did that every freaking weekend while working the car dealership, you know, Monday through Friday. And it was just a disaster. That's exactly what it was. 2010, I found out that I had a baby on the way. I couldn't be in the car business anymore with my license things. And, and it just created a shit storm for me. But that's when I sobered up March of 2010. I found out that I had a baby on the way and that would forever change the course of my life. And so, man, you guys met my little guy, hashtag the middle school millionaire. So if, and only if you have kids that need mentoring, go find hashtag the middle school millionaire. He's got a t-shirt on Amazon like 19 bucks the money goes to help the homeless and youth we'll, and we'll get into your son here in a second because okay. that's an awesome part of your story but once again guys every master was once a disaster doesn't mm -hmm. matter where you come from doesn't matter what you experience doesn't matter the lows imagine going from that high to that low now one thing that i have noticed because i've been in sales for many many years high high level salespeople, specifically those that comes naturally to them, are very, very, very likely to abuse some type of uh, habit or, or substance or have some type of vice. I mean, it's, it's a, I, I've been in the industry. There's a, there's a movie that you probably know, Bryce, that every fucking hustler and salespeople know, which is called The Boiler Room. Uh, most people, most regular people don't never even heard of the boiler room. What the fuck is that shit? But in the boiler room, they talk about this. You know, there, there's a section where they go have like a get together at somebody's house. And the guys had a big old beautiful house, but just crap all over the place. Doesn't really even have a couch and stuff because they're <laughs> most of the money goes up the nose. And it's something that happens. Now, why do I say this? Because we have, um, we had a comment here, a question. Where the fuck can I scroll down? God damn it. We see, this is what we need to <laughs> Hold on, let me go back over here because I, I think it was Josh who asked uh, if this was something that you are born with. Yeah, Josh Castro asked, that that is this something learn? that you were born with? Or is it, I mean, is this something that just came naturally to you? Did you have to work at this? Yeah, that's a great question. So I would tell you yes and yes. So I believe that it's been my God given talent and ability to be a salesman but also a teacher. And that's the big thing. You see, you could go into a car dealership and see a really great salesperson, but they're probably not a great teacher, manager, or leader. And you can go into a car dealership and, and this is in any business, any sales arena, you could go and talk to really great management teams, right? I've been blessed with the gift to be able to do both and very few and far between can do both actually sell and close deals and manage and lead a team. And I'm not claiming to be perfect, but I've been very, very pr productive and successful with it. So, well, and one thing that I, one thing that you mentioned is true that if people that are naturally good salesmen are not naturally good teachers. But and I'm also going to say, I, well, I'm also example, gonna... like athletes, you know, you get somebody that's a natural born athlete, they usually don't make a very good fucking coach. Yeah. But the best athlete and even coaches of athletes have or have had coaches. And, and so yeah. I'm always groaning, growing, excuse me, I'm groaning too. Okay. I'm always growing. And heck, I was just telling these guys right before our call here, like I just hired a new sales coach to take me to that next level, you know? And so I'm always sharpening these skills. You see my hat, it's an acronym. Not only is it to sharpen as iron sharpens iron, but it's selflessly helping already persons eager for nurturing because I want to give back because I want to be who I wish that I had. And so, man, when, when I was going through all this, I had this baby on the way I sobered up and I realized I've got like maybe 70 to 80 grand left in my account. Like I'm wondering what the hell just happened. 
and I thought everything was going to be okay. I, I started going back into corporate America. I got a contract with De Beers and RDI Trading, the two largest diamond manufacturers. Um, I, I got a contract with Magna Resources, which is one of the largest gas and oil joint venture companies. And I'm teaching their salespeople how to sell hundreds of thousands of million dollar packages over the phone. And then I found that, man, I needed to move. ADT Tyco Corporation picked me up. Huge, amazing company. That's what brought me to Texas. Gave me a new face, a new look on life, and a new perspective. However, that message came from this mess right here. This is what I want to share with you guys. It's never, ever too late to reach out to someone if it's too late. You see, when I found out that I had my son, I sobered up. What I didn't find out until I moved to Texas was his, his mom hadn't sobered up and she continued to abuse prescription pills and drink when I wasn't around. And there was a Friday afternoon sometime in like January, I think it was. I don't remember the date, but uh, uh, 2011, a couple months after having the baby and I came home early one day, I was going to surprise her. We were going to go celebrate a big win that I had that day. And man, I came home to a mess of prescription pills, a baby crawling through them, and she's OD'd in the bed. I was done. I, you are not going to put me and my livelihood at risk. I picked him up. I packed a backpack. And then the hustler in me, the gangster in me, put him back down in the pills. And I took a bunch of pictures, you know. <laughs> that was Friday. I went and stayed in the hotel. Um, and come Monday, I filed for sole custody of my son filed for custody of my son and the next couple of months would just be the battle of my life not only did I win sole custody of him pay for my attorney but apparently she had been swindling money and had my access to my account and I paid for her attorney too and uh guys what the fuck is your excuse seriously seriously Greg Cook says this is I would be willing to bet that most of you have not had anywhere near close to the experience before that. And, you know, that goes to show your mental strength. That goes to show your uh, capability of being able to adjust, which is something that, you know, being able to go through that would have taken down many, many, many other people. So big kudos to you for, for recognizing that, for putting a stop to that. And more than more than that, to being able to get forward and, and get past that, because at this point, I mean, you this this would have to been one of the if not the lowest points in your life, just going through emotionally. Oh, I can just imagine all the bullshit that was going through your head through, through this time, man. It's, Bro, it's here, here's the thing. You were doing a deal when, when we were at the Kingdom uh, event, when we were speaking there together. And I don't know if you heard this part because you were hustling, you were working a, a deal at the time, but it gets worse. You see, I actually had a moment where I, I slipped and what people would say would be a weak moment, but I finally realized I used to be that guy. Like you're thinking about contemplating suicide, like you're weak, you're selfish, this, that, and the other. You fast forward about nine months after I lost my Tyco corporation, when they found out I was staying in the hotel. Now I'm homeless sleeping in my car the next eight and a half, nine months. And that nest egg that I thought that I had dwindled down to $32. You see, September 28, 2011 would be the pivotal point in my life when I knew that I was greater than what I had been given myself. Because as my friend says, Les Brown, man, love that guy. If you guys don't know Les Brown is you're crazy, godfather of motivational speaking. But he says, we all have greatness inside of us. It's just a matter of how you're going to find it. You've got greatness inside of you. And I didn't know that. I had always been positive. I've always pushed forward. But man, September 28, 2011, I put my 40 cal. It's never jammed before. It never jammed since. But I put my 40 cal in my mouth and I pulled the trigger three times. I pulled the trigger three times. And in that moment, I got mad at the God that I thought I knew. And I said, F and show up, bro. Because I call God bro because... My God is a freaking gangster, just saying. And uh, man, he showed up. He showed up, and I didn't know who he was. I gave him an ultimatum. And I said, if you are who they say you are and you are who you say you are, show up. 
within the next 18 hours, I'd fall into a deep sleep. I would, I would, I would, I don't remember like other than just screaming and yelling at him. I went back to the back seat of my car, cuddled up with my little monkey and I passed out. I woke up the next morning to a phone call in an email and text messages blowing up. My mom's looking for me. And that wasn't because they knew what happened the night before. Hell, my mom just found out about this a few years ago when I finally came out and shared this with the world. But I got a phone call from Wells Fargo saying that my account had been compromised and they had a suspicious activity of $20,000 deposit in my account. My account was to be frozen if I didn't come in and check that out. Literally went in there, found out that it was an old client of mine that owed me money. They kept my account on this like probationary status and only let me withdraw and use $2,000 a month. I didn't know where I was going, but I was going to celebrate. We were going to go to Taco Bueno because that was me and my little guy's thing. We were going to celebrate. I didn't know where I was going within literally hours. I, two to three hours, I got a second phone call. Uh, is this Bryce? Yeah, who is this? Uh, we found an old application. We're just wondering if you're still looking for a place to move. You know, it's a matter of fact, it's funny. I'm not liking staying in my friend's house anymore. What do you got? I found a one bedroom apartment, moved in all the crap I had in my car. We moved into a one bedroom apartment, slept on the floor the next couple months while I figured out what the hell I was going to do. So literally on a salary paid by the bank, I went out and hustled and did odd end, odds and end jobs, watched the YouTube university, never got me anywhere, but I'd heard about wholesaling and I found an ad for a company here in Dallas looking for, and this is where it turns into real estate. This is how I got started in real estate. I literally, it was like nine months in, I had no money left of that 20 grand because we'd been living, paying bills, paying my mom back, back past debt that she put on her credit card, like literally hand to fist, the last few dollars of my name. I found this ad. They were looking for acquisitions persons. I went through the hiring process a week and a half to two weeks later. And man, they offered me a job and y'all know what I said about jobs. I said, hell no, but I tell you what I'll do. You got my resume and I went into close mode and I said, if you give me a shot, make me a partner and we will blow this thing out of the water. Promise you. And they laughed. They laughed at me. I walked out. I felt like I wasted their time. I knew that I was going to do something different, but I didn't know what it was. And literally like a day or two later, they said, man, we've been thinking about a kid. We'd like to talk to you. They told me if I came back in and did 10 transactions my first month, we would have a conversation about doing a partnership. I came in and did 23 transactions my first month in this business with the very simple five-step process to a conversation. Nice. And we'll, we will get into those five steps because we need a fucking oh, breather after breathe. that, man. <laughs> so we, got, um, we got all kinds of people. You know what? So... Normally in this show, I find myself stopping the guests and breaking down what they say because real estate talk, you know, we've been doing this shit for so long. We do this shit every day that we just don't even realize that, hey, there's other people that not, might not understand what a double close is or an assignment or whatever, right? Um, however, in this, in this particular scenario, uh, because you've opened up and started sharing i don't think you um <laughs> realize how deep all that shit was and we had a lot of people here that were commenting greg cook saying wow that was fucking deep josh castro says shit's getting real we got the niece saying that was deep uh we had Celie saying that your angel was watching over you our boy armando saying wow that was deep yeah. um josh castro who says i usually only cry from laughter from this show <laughs> yeah, exactly man yeah thanks for being so vulnerable man like that just shows you that everybody, no matter how successful they look right now, everybody's been through some shit, you know? Everybody hits rock bottom sometime. And, and that's the thing that I wanted to continue to push here, guys. Remember that every master was once a disaster. It doesn't matter where you're at right now. It doesn't matter, you know, because one of the things that had to be, so being in that position sucks regardless. Being in that position where you're just out of money, you're, you're figuring out you owe people money, like that, that position just sucks anyway. But imagine being in that position after achieving all the shit that he achieved initially at such a young age. 
that's mental torture. And, and that, that had to be just really, really hard. But once again, kudos to you for A, being open. Kudos to you for being able to take this shit, learn from it, and move forward into it. And kudos for you for saying, you know what, Let, let's take this. Let's move on to the next one. And, and, I, and I have a saying that I say all the time. And sometimes I don't like it because I have to eat my own fucking words. But it's, 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 it's always been true, which is things don't work out the way we want them to. They work out the way that they're supposed to. And, and this was something that was just supposed to happen because had all this stuff not happened, you wouldn't have been in the position where you're at. So you're yeah. at this point now where you have had one of the craziest fucking stories that we have ever heard here in the AZ Flip Guys. Uh, one of the craziest stories that I'm sure our audience have ever heard out there in general in any podcast or medium that they're listening to. And, and, and I want to once again point that it doesn't matter how low you were, you can always come back. But you came back and you came back strong and you said, all right, man, we're going to go into this wholesale thing. Let me apply these five steps. Let, let me, cause this was something that you learned. And this was one thing that I love about life entrepreneur and the journey. It's just like a movie, just like whatever. There's a, there's a guy trying to get over here to do accomplish X, Y, Z. In the process, he goes and he meets so-and-so and so-and-so and and all these different things, gets in all this trouble, gets in all these adventures. But there's little lessons to be learned everywhere. And one of the things that you did is you learned from selling selling cars and getting really good at selling cars. At that point, and one of the things that I've I've shared before is that I've been in the sales industry. I wasn't selling cars. I was selling junk. I was selling crap. I was selling knickknacks. But the point, the thing that we learned was that it's not the actual object that you're selling, it's yourself. Mm-hmm. And I took in lessons that I learned from street hustling to sell this stuff. So you, one of the lessons that you took was these five steps. This process that I, that I has already been proven for me, has already been proven for Ford in general, was actually not, not only proven for them, but other dealerships were copying the strategy. Now let me implement this into this that avenue so uh without any more interruptions why don't we get into your five steps of how um how it is that you were able to do if i remember if i heard you correctly you said 27 deals in your first month or something like that 23 23 god well whatever who fuck (laughs) most people do in their first two years that's that's what i was about to say love it oh man I want you to check out the, uh, the uh, chat when you get a second, because that would have been a great opportunity. But in the meantime, man, I, I can tell you, if you're listening to this right now, these five steps that I'm going to share with you right now will not only take your business to the next level, not only give you more money on every freaking deal, but it's going to better your communication with your relationships, your spouse, your kids, your parents, your business partner, these five steps will change the way you converse with people and the intricate, simple things that I do to show you what that looks like. So let's break it down. I'm going to give you an example and I'm going to talk about going to the gym. Now, mind you, I'm not the most physically fit, but I'm going to give you an example about going to the gym. We've all been to the gym or we've seen somebody that goes to the gym or maybe we had PE class. We all know the first thing that we do is what? We stretch out. Yeah, we stretch out. We warm up. Well, we get stretched out. We get warmed up. And when we do that, we know that we want to start, we we want to bench press like 200 pounds or 250 pounds. We push it up. We're like, oh, shit, I can't do that. So what do we do? Well, we bridge the gap. We put on 100, 150, 175 to 200 pounds, maybe six months down the road. We bridge that gap. Step number two is bridging the gap. Step three at the gym, now you've been pumping iron, no matter what day it is, how far you are into that gap, you're now creating limiting beliefs. You now have muscle fatigue and your muscles are telling your brain and your brain are communicating with your heart and your guts wanting to give up. You have a limiting belief in your head and you're done. You're getting that limiting belief. So my step number three is right there in that. And we're going to talk about that. It's where I ask defeating questions. And then step number four, this is where we rack the bar and make a mental note of rack 
R-A-Q. We rack the bar and we close our set out. Step number four is we close. We get the deal. We lock up the contract. We set the appointment. We get our kids to go clean their room. Whatever it is, you close the deal. You get the objective. You conquer. And then step number five, what do we do? We praise our kids. Or if you're at the gym, you stretch out. You don't just go home. You stretch out. You cool on. Or as I say, warm down. Now, in that process of going to the gym, warming up, bridging the gap, defeating questions or creating limiting beliefs, in, in other words, the close out of your set, and then five, the warm down, that analogy will work every single time if you use it in a conversation. Use Perfect. that so analogy we, in a conversation. So why don't we go ahead and put that into a real life scenario? So the majority of our people here are, um, are in real estate or want to be in real estate. The majority of the people here are wholesaling or even the ones that are not full-time wholesalers will still wholesale from time to time. Or, uh, you know, even if you don't do that, you have conversations with people which Bryce said, this is something that, this is a five-step process that you can use to better your relationships all the way around. And one thing that I feel a lot of times that happens, it comes more natural to me, uh, but it's something that I, that I recognize as one of my superpowers is just basic human communication, being able to talk to people, being able to connect with people. But Bryce, why don't we use this in a real life scenario? And why don't we use a wholesale deal? Because a lot of our audience will understand that better. Right. So why don't, we, why don't we go through your five steps through the wholesale process? Absolutely. Great question. And, and I appreciate you, the opportunity there. So remember, step one is the warm up. I want to give you guys an acronym. If you're listening to this right now, write this down, pull over, bookmark it, do whatever you got to do, but don't just do nothing. Step number one is the warm up. The entire warm up is all about form. F O R, if you're watching this live, watch my hands. F O R M. Form. You're going to warm with form, family, occupation, recreation, motivation. Here's the deal. Notice that the two hands are separate on, on the description here because you can never find their motivation if you don't know what they're for. So, so guys, for, for you guys that are listening in a podcast and cannot see his hands. Uh, <laughs> I use both of them. <laughs> he basically held up one hand with three fingers to show you know, the first three letters and then one hand with the other finger to show the second, this is the fourth letter, just to show you that they have to be different. They have to be, they have to be. If we recall earlier, we, we, what we want to do is we, the entire process, our whole goal is to take somebody in their current reality and show them their desired reality or find their desired reality and you want to be the middle person. You want to keep those two realities as far apart as possible. That is your objective. So your son wants to go to a game. He needs his current reality is his room's a mess, right? Like put that into layman's terms. Now you're in a, a wholesale deal or you're in a, a contract negotiation deal. What is their pain? What is their current reality? And separate that from their desired reality. And here's how you do that. Step one is the form. Find out what they're for. So Chris, role play with me if you would. I would love to. Ring, ring. Yeah, uh, what do you want? <laughs> hey, Chris, this is Bryce. How are you, man? I'm good. What's up? Man, you sound busy. Are you, are you at work or are the kids just keeping you active? These damn kids, man, they won't shut up. Holy cow, that sounds frustrating. How many kids you got, man? I got a couple kids, man. What, what can I do for you? Yeah, man, I, I was just reaching out to you. You see, I buy a couple houses in the area and my partners are looking for a new one. And I'm wondering if I made you a fair offer that made sense. Would you sell me your house today? I never really thought about it. Okay. So it sounds like you're open to it. If I made you a fair offer, would you sell me your house today? Uh, maybe. Okay. I appreciate that, man. Tell me about your kids. Why are they stretching you out, bro? How many kids you got? I got two boys, eight and 11. Eight and 11. You said that with confidence. They must be uh, in sports, huh? Oh, you know this. <laughs> okay. Okay. What do they play, man? Uh, soccer and baseball. Soccer and baseball. Wow. You said soccer first. Are you, are you coaching the team? 
No way, man. No way. Not your cup of tea, huh? Okay. Okay. Well, man, that's got to be rewarding seeing them run up and down the field. Is, is that exhausting watching that or, or you get excited and root them on, man? Oh, man. You know, I like to root them on. But hey, what can I do for you? You say, you, you, uh, well, how much do you want to pay for my house? What are you going to offer me? That's a great question, Chris. And I'm going to tell you, at the end of the day, I know you want to get as much as you possibly can. And for the same reason, I want to give you as much as I possibly can. But I need to know more about your house and the situation that we're in. So tell me a little bit more about what's going on. You've got two boys. They're stressing you out. Is, is work playing a key factor in that, too? No, nah, man, my house is just too small. We need something bigger. Oh, man getting too small is that because the family's growing and people moving in or growing up what, what's that look like yeah yeah definitely we're too we're too many uh the, the boys are big and we need to move on all right so i'm going to stop right there and break this down so right there what i did was i i'm talking about his boys you see people want to talk about themselves people will go off on tangents and give you more shit than you ever realized they gave you if you're not intentionally listening and so if you're trying to get to the price and with them and let them take you off track, you're going to be taken off track. However, if you dig in and find out what that true motivation is, but by doing it with what they're for, the boys are stressing them out. They're busy. They've got games. I could have went 20 other directions with that, but I was trying to keep it, you know, so we can get all of it in here. Right. right. But at the end of the day, his boys are into sports. He loves watching them. He roots them on. They're getting too big. They want their own rooms. I probably would have found out about bedrooms and bathrooms down the road. And that's why, because they've been sharing a room and it's a two bedroom and the other, whatever. Right. But we're talking about their family. That's what is important to him. The work wasn't so important to him. He's not proud of what he does. So that's probably stressing him out. Keep that in mind because people talk about what they're proud of. He was, he, if you're listening to this, I can see Chris's face, but I want you to rewind this, go back and listen to how Chris's tonality, even in this mock role play, when he started talking about his boys, his whole tone changed and he didn't even realize that he did it. When you can hear the things that they're saying, when they're not saying anything at all, now you know that you are in the game. Now, you know, that the ball is in your court. You just pitch it back to them every once in a while, play tennis with them, pitch it back, let them feel good. Let them talk about themselves. And now your business will go to the next level with that one little trick right there. Now, one of the things that I did was, Oh, wow. Two boys. What, how old are they? I racked it. Remember I emphasize on step three, how we rack the bar before the close. That acronym, R-A-Q, is an acronym that I want you to write down, RAC. Repeat, acknowledge, question. When you ask a question and acknowledge it and you repeat it back to them, it shows the subconscious mind of the other person that you, my friend, are paying attention. RAC, repeat, acknowledge, question. And when you can do it with feeling, man, two boys, that's got to be exciting. Exciting. When you talk about a feeling, emphasize a verb on that proud moment that you repeated, now your question around that just took them down another direction, right? Chris was trying to throw me off and he did a great job. The average sellers, man, they're going to talk about their boys. They just won conference last week. They're going to state like, oh man, you, that's freaking awesome. Now, here's the thing. I want to teach you guys a trick. A lot of people are like, oh, my boys are in soccer too. Forget about it. Who gives a shit about you? Yes. That's Chocolate. what I always yes. say. It's not a bad yes. Right. I knew that your audience would get that. Thank you. But just so you know, I was asked to speak at an event. Uh, this was sometime last year. And I walked up and I was that was my number one thing. Guys, that was my message for the night. Understand that nobody gives a fuck about you. Mm -hmm. They give yes. a fuck about themselves. Oh my God. So awesome. So yes, yes, that is great. So you, you, you know what, hold on, before we even continue down this road, guys, I, first of all, if you don't have a fucking pen and pad, I don't know what the fuck Crazy. you're fucking doing. Crazy. You are fucking nuts. You better fucking go to the goddamn uh, iTunes. You better fucking download this podcast, which we should have it ready on Monday, right? Monday's when yeah, we drop every Monday, every Monday we drop, make sure you download it, replay this shit. 
and take fucking notes, okay? Guys, understand what is going on at this moment. You are getting broken down through a step-by-step -step process by a master. Now, if you see and you see how, um, how easy he flows, how seamless this whole conversation seems to him, because he's been doing this for a very, 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 very long time. But once again, that old gall goes back to every master was once a disaster. He didn't start off this way. Now, he might have been a little bit more um, naturally gifted than the, than the average person for it. But that doesn't mean that he started off doing this when he first started. This took many years of consistently going back. And if I remember correctly earlier, Josh was asking, hey, did this come naturally to you? Yes. But then he also asked a second question. Is this a learnable skill? And the answer is fuck yes. Yeah. Now, it might be easier for some people than others. Like my personality, it'd be easier to pick this up than cash flow Chris's personality. But that doesn't mean that he can't learn this. That doesn't mean that he can master it, especially when you're following a proven system like Bryce is showing here. And as he's going through, he's showing you through this example this is how it fits into where you're at. So you talked about um, you talked about the getting them to talk about themselves, which is fucking genius. That was my number. That was and is my number one tool in human communication. Get them to talk about themselves because there's one thing that people love to do more than anything else is talk about themselves and what they love and and you know the things that they like to do. So you you continue to. Bring this back. You continue to uh, re reposition the conversation to back into your form. And then you talked about racking it, which what rack it was repeatedly acknowledge questions. Now you're able to give them validation. This is something that I teach my students because one of the things that I teach my students is mindset. And then I teach them how to network. It's not about the fact that you need to network is how to successfully network. So one of those things is repeatedly asking questions. You're good. Repeatedly asking those, acknowledging the questions that were asked. So if, I, if I'm talking to you and I'm saying, hey, man, so what is it that you do, Chris? Oh, you're a realtor. Realtor, man, that's awesome. Tell me about that. Tell me how do you like being a realtor? Because at this point, I just acknowledge what they said so they know that I'm actually listening. And most places, most people, what they do is they don't really listen at all. They just sit there and hear you long enough so they can fucking respond. Right. They're always thinking about what they're going to say mm -hmm. next. They don't even listen to what you are saying, exactly. which, is, which is crazy. That's a horrible way to, to gain rapport, you know, just shut up and listen. But it's something that happens a lot. So when you, when you rack, as Bryce was saying over here, which is repeatedly acknowledge the question, you say, hey, man, not only am I paying attention to you, but I actually validate you by asking you that. Oh, so your kids are on soccer, man. How long have they been doing that? That validates you as a person saying, oh, shit, man. Yeah. Yeah. I take my kids to soccer. That's good stuff. So anyway, you talked about uh, you talked about form. You talked about rack, uh, but we're still in, in step number one, correct? That's correct. That oh, is wow. correct. So, man, you, you I couldn't have summarized it better, brother. I really appreciate you I'm guys. telling you, dude, I need to charge these motherfuckers. <laughs> So they can fucking have me translate their shit into plain motherfucking English. Because as I said, once again, my specialty, basic human communication. You got to dumb it down, man. got to make it, it goes, simple. Yeah, no, exactly, right? Like the old sales acronym, keep it simple, stupid. I mean, I turn it around and say, keep it stupid, simple, because I'm not the brightest crayon in the box. And I just do this naturally. But when I became a a media social media influencer when i became a a international speaker when i became a fortune 500 business consultant like i had to know my shit but number one i had to be able to teach it to people that normally wouldn't come so naturally and that's why this is so simple that's why this is so easily like it's it's because what you have created is known as a system Right. And you hear right. the AZ flip guys all the fucking time. The two things that we talk about all the fucking time are networking and systems, system, 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 a business system, which is why I'm a huge, huge fan of the E-Myth, which is why I'm a huge fan of the movie, The Founder, that talks about the story of Ray Kroc. And my favorite part in The Founder is when he's sitting in the fucking tennis court 
on top of the with the McDonald's brothers. They're sitting on top on the tennis court and they're literally drawing down on the tennis court itself with chalk. Hey, you do this, you move here, you move there. And they're looking at how that works. They created the system. Now they're able to teach the system to somebody that may not understand everything completely, but understands do this, do this, do this, do this. And that's what Bryce has created. Is he's created a system. So somebody like uh, our boy, Josh Castro, you don't have to be naturally gifted as Bryce mm -hmm. if you just follow the fucking system. That's an, uh, under, that's an understatement, BP. Josh, yes. all you got to do is talk, of, ask them a question about their kids and let them talk. And when they give you two or three nuggets, now you've got two or three ways the conversation can go. When the kids are in soccer and the other kids in baseball, man, which one do you enjoy watching most, baseball or soccer? Oh, wow. Baseball, repeat, acknowledge. Hmm, that's interesting. Why baseball? Question. If you do a little hmm, like you're thinking, it shows them that you're interested. Repeat, acknowledge, question. Use it all the way through. Use it on your kids. Use it on your wife, your husband, do whatever. So Man. while you're while you're doing the form technique, which is something that once again you're breaking down here in real time. Uh, and guys, hold on. Let me what hold on. Motherfuckers. Uh -oh. If you question the value that we bring, seriously, we have a master sales guy who his sales technique was picked up by Ford and drawn throughout the fucking country breaking down his fucking step for all you motherfuckers out there complaining. Oh, I can't get nowhere. I can't get a deal. I can't find shit. Motherfucker. You need to be watching this. You need to be paying attention and you need to be taking notes, but you're talking about here, Bryce, about your form technique. Now throughout, if, if you guys, um, if you guys watched the first, you know, five minutes ago or whatever, when he was actually breaking this down, he kept on bringing it back up. So he kept on racking it, the conversation that, okay, I acknowledge. Yeah, yeah, tell, well, tell me a little bit more about that. Continually going back to the form, continually going back to the family, the, the occupation, the recreation, and their motivation. Yes, yes. And Josh says, Josh recapped in another way that I, what I was saying, quit telling them how good I am at soccer. Yeah. If, if you go in, you know, I use an example, one of our coaching students, right? She, her, she couldn't figure out why she wasn't having any luck and it was like a huge freaking like neon fluorescent light bulb that went off for her when i showed her this it was one simple thing and i found it in a role playing so when uh, bp talks about you know i've been doing this for years don't think that i'm better than anybody because i still practice every freaking day so you need to be practicing write out your script follow go back and piece this conversation together because it is my script essentially i know it by heart i practice 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 so that said josh said quit talking to him about how good you are at soccer mm -hmm. if they've got a dog barking and it's barking ask them what kind of dog they got and if they've got a german shepherd and you got a german shepherd use that bitch be, to be your leverage don't tell them you got a german shepherd oh wow you got a german shepherd you can ask a better question was it a canine rescue oh man that's exciting. What kind of shepherd is it? Is it truly a German shepherd or is it an Australian or is it this or is it that? Ask them better questions. Who gives a shit if you've got a shepherd or who gives a darn if you love soccer? Now you have that leverage. Man, what position does your boy play? Does he play forward or is he back in the back as goalkeeper? Ask them better questions. And now they're like, holy shit, this guy knows me. I love this guy. <laughs> and they don't know uh, shit about you. They it. don't know who you are. They don't know what your company is. All they know is they know, like, and trust you because you gave a damn. And here's the deal. When you give a damn, people will work with you nine out of 10 times before they'll work with anybody else. So you rack that, you rack that form all the way through, you rack all five steps all the way through the conversation. You find out those motivators and dig in three or four twists of the knife and then pour salt on that. When you get to step four and you close the deal. So we'll right now we are, we're finishing up step one, which is keep on reverting the conversation back to their family, the orientation, their motivation, this type of stuff. You want to find what that is. You want to continue. Not, not their orientation, their occupation. That's what, oh yeah, that's what I meant. <laughs> that's what I meant to say. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> it's all good. Y'all know, y'all know what the fuck I meant anyway. So, uh, so anyway, that, that, that is step one. How do you then move that into step two? 
Absolutely. So this is step two is very simple. This is where you start taking the conversation from where their current reality is and what's stressing them out. And you start digging in, you start bridging that gap and pouring salt on the wound. So the main, start- so the main portion, if I understand this correctly, the main purpose of the first section, which is the form, step number one, is to eventually dig down where they, you're going to find out their motivation. Now, what you're doing is you're doing... Let, pro- me, let me say this before I lose my train of thought. The main purpose of the, of the warm-up, step one, that should be about 80%. You remember the 80-20 rule, Pareto's mm-hmm. principle, go look it up. I don't have time to tell you about it. The 80-20 rule, 80% of your transaction should be done in step one. The other 20%, the income producing activities, it comes now. The other 20%. So you might spend an hour and a half on step one. The next four steps, you might spend 10 minutes. But now you know what their motivation is and they haven't even told you yet because they're going to tell you, well, you know, I just can't afford the house. What they didn't tell you that you found out is that they've got two kids. They're in it in sports. That's more important than maintaining this house. That shit's overwhelming. The wife is about to leave them. They're stressed out. They cuss each other out before they go to bed and they never actually verbally told you that, but you know that because you can read between the lines when you find out what they're for. And now on the other hand, that motivation over here, now you know how to put so, that. And this, this is what I was getting at. And this That's is what it. I love about That's your strategy. True. I call it the fucking Trojan horse strategy. Yeah, so you're exactly. Three, <laughs> yes. three of F O R on these, and then you're finding a way, an indirect way to find their motivation indirectly asking them, indirectly getting those type of questions. Um, it, it's one of these things where everybody loves to buy, but no, uh, well, everybody loves to buy, but nobody likes to be sold to. And when you start asking for motivation, then they feel like, oh man, this is, this is what he really wants. You know, like he really wants. And people hate to talk about emotions. Our society has talked about not telling a, you know, not crying. Like I almost got in tears earlier telling my story. Society says we can't get emotional, but we all have emotions. And so when you say, oh man, that's exciting. Boom. You gave them emotion and they didn't realize it. Oh shit. That's gotta be frustrating. Yeah, it is. They start acknowledging it because it is frustrating. If you were in that situation, you'd be pissed off, burnout, out and done. You assign the emotion, give them permission to have that emotion. And then you move into step two, bridge the gap. Bridging the gap is very simple. This is where you take them from their form and you start moving them closer. And that simply sounds like this. Okay, Chris, man, I appreciate you sharing that. Sounds like you've got a great family. Typically, people we speak to want to know what we do and how we do it, but more importantly, how much we can offer for their house. Do you have those same types of questions? Now, before you answer that in the role play, before you answer that, notice the tonalities. Go back, watch, re-listen, whatever. Listen to the tonalities. One of the things that I have as leverage is about 12 years ago, or no, it's about 14 years ago, I was certified as an NLP instructor and coach. NLP is Neuro Linguistic Programming and how to enunciate and speak words, but it's so much more than that. It's verbal, nonverbal, micro expressions, whatever. Um, But that's a whole nother topic. In the meantime, what I want to stress here is nine out of 10 of you that are listening to this, I've heard your calls. Maybe not you specifically, but I've heard the ones that are trying to get help. I've heard the ones that have scripts. I've looked at the other coaches out there and nine out of 10 of those damn calls go like this. Oh man, I'm sorry. I bothered you, Chris. Uh, did I catch you at a bad time? Who gives a shit if you caught them at a bad time? Because if they truly want to sell their house and you got the cape on, you're the superhero. You're going to solve their needs, wants, and desires. Quit apologizing. Quit apologizing. So now you make them feel like they're on the in crowd. Make them feel like they're a part of the crew, right? So what I said there was typically people, I'm third partying affirming this. Typically people we speak to want to know what we do. And I speed it up right there and how we do it. And I enunciate it's pause with the comma, but more importantly, how much we can offer for their house. Notice I said house, not home, because the home is the desired. 
Their house is now their current reality. It's a house. Detach their emotions. Do you have those same types of questions? I say same types of questions because now all they can say is yes, because you've given them what you want them to say. Now, besides that, Chris, help me understand, why are you interested in selling the house today? Enunciate today. Because now you're building urgency while you exploit, keyword exploit their motivation. All right, so why don't we go ahead and ask that again to Chris so then he can respond and we can continue the, I see, um, I see the we can look continue on your face. The, the Stop yeah. no. <laughs> no, which is awesome. I'm, I love the fact that you're breaking this shit down, man, because they get to see it in theory, but they also get to see it in, in action, in, in actual real life scenario. So anyway, ask Chris the question, then he can respond. Exactly. So, okay, great, great, Chris. You know, typically we people we speak to want to know what we do and how we do it, but more importantly, how much we can offer for their house. Do you have those same types of questions? Yeah, exactly. I want to know how much I'm going to get. And besides that, help me understand, why are you interested in selling your house today? Just because we need a bigger house. This, this one's too small, not enough room. Oh, wow. Not enough room. Man, I appreciate you sharing that with me. It sounds like things are getting frustrating and a little overwhelming. Tell me, what's the address of the property you'd like to sell today? Ugly ass house, Phoenix, Arizona. <laughs> and the number I called you from, is that the best number to reach you at? Yeah, that's my cell. Fantastic. Perfect. So we just bridged the gap. Now we're talking business. Mm -hmm. Now we know what they think is their motivation, but we know they're stressed out. We know that they can't deal with this anymore. The wife is probably chewing his ass 20 times every other week. He got to get a new house. We know all that. So you spend the first 30, 60 minutes, whatever, building rapport, continuing to go back to the form specifically focusing on the first three, which is the shit about them. Then you, so you can start learning about the last one, which is the M, which is their motivation. Once you start getting to the point where, okay, you're building a rapport through their rapport, as Bryce said, and I, and I say this all the time, people will tell you who the fuck they are. If you just shut the fuck up and pay attention, mm -hmm. seriously. Nice. So every single time they're telling you about their kids and they're telling you about work and they're telling you about, their hobbies and they're telling you about their wife and their family and everything else. They're giving you clues as to the stuff, their real motivation behind it. Because if you were to follow one of these bullshit scripts that uh, Bryce was talking about, one of them, one of their questions normally is what's your motivation? Whatever answer they give you nine out of 10 times is full of shit. They're not really giving you the real reason why they need to sell it. And so they don't even know they, they don't even know that they're lying to you. They, they lie to themselves. Exactly. Exactly. So you don't go through that. You, you spend the time and the energy finding out what they want and what their motivation is. Once you start getting an idea for what their motivation is, then you go to step number two, which is bridging the gap. Now, we, now we're going to go from talking about you and your family and your friends to now, now let's start talking about the reason why I called you. Now, at this point, and dude, you know what? I, this is something that I use with women all the fucking time. By the way, I, I, <laughs> dude, I, 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 I like that uh, because it is you. They, they know why you're here, but let's not talk about it. Let's just fucking you want to talk to me about your friend. And you want to you want to get to home base. You got to go to first, second and third, bro. <laughs> exactly. And and at the meantime, it, you know, he explained to them my home, second and third is fucking <laughs> important and what their friend said and everything else. In between. Step five is when you're walking out the door politely and making them feel good about it. If you do this, this technique and you pay attention, you ask the right questions, you ask more informed questions. You don't say, oh, well, my brother does that too. Let me tell you about it. No, shut the fuck up. Well, shit, oh, tell me, oh, shit, your, your, your brother's an attorney. Oh man, what type of attorney is it? Oh, blah, blah. you start finding out this motivation throughout the conversation, she'll drop, well, you know, my last boyfriend did this. I don't like this. I really like this. I really like that. Blah, 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 blah. You're not even actually talking. So back to real estate, you bring them talking about themselves, talking about their family, talking about what they like, talking about everything. You start finding the motivation. At this point, you say, all right, let's start bridging the gap. Let's start moving it into what we came here for. Yeah. And, and let's remember talk about this. Now, one thing that I did see you do. Hold on real, real quick. Revert back. Hold on real quick, real quick. Sure. You, you mentioned attorneys. And I want you guys to know that out of anybody I ever talked to, I love talking to attorneys first. 
and they come across, if you don't know them, they come across as arrogant because they're confident. They feel educated. They feel a little higher above And A lot of people that I've talked to feel and get scared talking to them. Guess what? They put their damn pants on the same way you and I do. Yep. And me personally, I mean, if you, if you're an underdog entrepreneur like me, man, I know, I've had to have conversations with attorneys. Hell, when I, when I was dealing, I used to deal blow to half of them in, in <laughs> Chicago, you know, and they, they're people. And so if they're attorneys, like, like uh, BP said, ask them, oh, wow, what kind of law do you practice? How long have you been doing that? What school did you go to? And when you ask three or four questions, man, their guard drops down. They become normal people real fast. Exactly. And now they're on your side. You know what I mean? They, yeah. they hired them to be on their side, but now they like you. They're on your side. So yes. once you get once you get them to know you, like you, trust you by asking them the right questions, by continuously racking up, acknowledging what they said, questioning, oh yeah, I don't know. now you start getting to the nitty gritty. All right, cool. So here's the deal. Blah 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 blah. What other type of questions like this do you have? No. Now he already knows that okay, let me precision this now to move into the section. We've already got an idea for who you are. We're, we're getting an idea of what your motivation is. And what one thing that I like when you did about the bridge is you reverted it back. Okay, so if I understood you correctly, the reason why you are looking to sell your house is because you have this, 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 and that. And it always normally goes back to the price for most people. <laughs> Even though that's not their main motivation, that's going to be the the, the topic of conversation. So you're, you're bridging the gap at this point. You're, you're taking the conversation from their current reality and then you want them to focus on what their future is going to look like. Yeah. So in step two, that, that analogy that I used about using all that ammo against them, that's actually going to be used in step four, mm -hmm. but we're now we've got them from one to two. We bridge the gap. We got the address. If you don't already have the address, if you do have the address, you can kind of bypass step two a little bit, but you can ask them, you know, if they have the same types of questions that these other people have, go back and rewind for the exact verbiage and go into step three. Step three is the second most crucial part of this conversation. Step three is where you create a limiting belief. This is where you take their desired reality when, so step three is defeating questions, which creates a limiting belief. Defeating questions creates a limiting belief. And so what I'm going to do here, I'm going to role play this real quick. And it's very simple. It's not what you say, guys. It's how you say it. So let's role play this. Man, Chris, it definitely sounds like a house that I'm interested in. This is where it gets ugly. Tell me a little bit more about the house. Well, I don't know. It's we've had it for like 10 years. It's uh, it needs some work. Um, you know, we kind of we were probably just going to do some carpet and paint it and put it on the MLS. So I got three things, 10, 10 years, some work, carpet and paint. So now we have three different ways we could rack that. Right. And, and I'm not going to go into the whole thing where we could go with it, but you rack it. Oh, wow. 10 years, man. Is, was this your first house? You could go that route or, oh, wow. It definitely needs carpet and paint. Are there any other things that you could be updating right now? Are you asking me that? Yeah. Oh I, no. Just, yeah. Uh, yeah just... My wife wants a new kitchen and I just can't afford it. <laughs> that and that's what happens see that's what happens so he just gave you his pain without telling you the pain the wife wants a new kitchen but they can't afford it but they sure as hell can afford that 800 dollars house payment at the new one that's already got the shit done for sure they could finance a new house so they could finance a new home but they can't afford to fix up the house they've gotten detached you just did it without even realizing you did it and that's called self-integrity when you say things that you don't realize you're saying and that's what your sellers will do. They'll say things like that. And now you know what they don't think that you know. Oh, wow. So the wife wants a new kitchen. What would you do to the kitchen if you were to fix this one up? Oh, man. She sees, uh, she sees all those kitchens on HDTV. They want, she wants the white cabinets and the granite countertops. Oh, man. Those are beautiful. Assign an emotion. Recognize it. A new kitchen would be great. And I'm sure she'd be happy with you too. Let me ask you, Chris, when was the last time you did any sort of updates or improvements on the house? Uh, not since we bought it. Oh, wow. And you've been there how long? 10 years. 
Oh, that's right. 10 years. We take good care of it, though. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. Goodness. 10 years, two boys. Wife's not happy. She's probably thrown a few things. No, I'm just kidding. Don't <laughs> answer that. I make a little joke every once in a while. Man, that's got to be overwhelming. Have you done any updates in the last two to five years? No, nope, not really. Uh, I want to point out when I'm asking these defeating questions, it don't matter what the hell you're asking them, but I'm reading verbatim off my script that I still keep in front of me after eight years, right? Seven, eight years. Like I still keep this in front of me because I want to know where you and I are at and I'm marking it right mentally. But when you ask these questions, it's not what you're asking, but it's how you're saying it. When you ask it like you're curious, like, have you done any major updates in the last two to five years? Ask that question like you're curious. Now you create a limiting belief. You're like, now when they think before you ever talked about price, notice we haven't done that. Now when they want to talk about, oh, I want 150000 that was at the beginning of the conversation. Now when you get to step four and you get into the nitty gritty, now their 150 is more like 130. 120 and maybe you need to be at 115 it's much easier to negotiate five grand than it is 50 grand mm -hmm. because they have put that limiting belief and deducted that price subconsciously in their head before you've ever even talked about the money and one of the things that i noticed that you did when you let them into the questioning is say all right we're going to talk about the the dirty the nitty-gritty uh, you're you're already preparing him for this let me start thinking about what's wrong with my house we're going to start thinking Oh, let's let this is the bad stuff, you know. I yes. completely caught that when you started saying it. Uh, fucking awesome, man. Fucking awesome, awesome, awesome. We got Isaiah Lee saying here, this is straight fire. We got our Cornelius beat saying his, and his scripts, uh, his, his scripts is a must have. And I completely agree. I mean, this is such a this is such a different level of um, this is such a different level of sales because you're getting into all the nitty gritty. And you mentioned something about being a, a, a certified NLP coach. And for you guys that don't know, NLP is Neuro Linguistic Programming. Uh, did I say that correctly? Yeah. I believe so. Um, so anyway, the, the point of that is that it's these little subtle things that you do say, um, pauses that you take, all these little things that most times go unnoticed that make such a big subconscious decision making in your mind that if you know these things, you're able to go down the line. And a lot of these things that he's talking about, he's incorporated them into his script. So he's he brought up the fact about, hey, man, you know what? All right, it's come down to it's here. Here comes the ugly part. We're going to talk about the house in the in the seller's mind. They're already thinking about what's bad about the house. What do I need to do as he started going in there and he racked the stuff that they said? Oh, shit. Well, tell me about this. Tell me about that. What else needs to happen now? They start basically putting themselves, they, they start walking themselves down the line. They start walking themselves down to closing by giving him all the information that he, that he's doing. He's still taking the Trojan horse of effect. So as opposed to asking, Hey, what's wrong with your house? All of a sudden, now they get defensive. Now they're like, Oh man, there, there's nothing wrong with my house. I've been in this motherfucker for 10 years. It's beautiful. It's the best <laughs> as opposed to, Oh, well just tell me about what it is. Tell me about that. Everything that he's collecting now, is a pain point. Everything is a part of their motivation. The real, real reason to their motivation as to why they're looking to sell. Josh, Josh says, I feel like my own house is a POS now. Yep. <laughs> Josh, here, here's the deal, you guys, and everybody that's listening right now. Thank you for recognizing that, BP. At the end of the day, it, it, that's a huge nugget. Before you ever start talking about the house, let them know that this is definitely one you're interested in. So you're not sold on the idea. Let them sell you. But this is where it gets ugly. And that was actually, I mean... BB, you catching that, bro? That was huge. Most people never catch that. That, my friend, is I NLP at its best. <laughs> <laughs> For you guys to know that movie reference. Uh, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm thinking, man, it's been too long. It's wearing down now. 42, bro. No. <laughs> so here's the deal. At the end of the day, that was actually hypnosis. Mm -hmm. So that seller at that point is hypnotized which hypnosis is actually one of the, the best forms of NLP. But subconsciously, now they have taken that nugget and they've built a limiting belief. They've got scared. That is hypnosis that this is where it gets ugly. 
that drop, that tonality drop, like, uh, like, uh, what did, who do, who was that? Josh actually said, this is where the vibe goes down. This mm-hmm. is where it gets serious. When it gets serious, it feels like the shit's going to hit the fan. It feels like everything's coming to an end. And now they know they got to talk about it and they're trying to sell you on it. But in reality, yeah, it's been 10 years. We need to do paint. We need to do carpet. And the damn wife wants a new kitchen. And I can't afford the 25 grand to update the kitchen. So I figured I'd leverage my credit in their head. This is all happening in their head. I figured I'd just buy her a new house and make a $100 less payment with the new interest rates that are low now. You know, whatever, right? I'd rather just get out of this mess. That's their current reality. You're putting salt on it. And now... That's all of step three. So let me just read through this real quick. So that way your audience can come back and tan type it out later. Have you done any major updates in the last two to five years? Well, we know we did this. No. Now this is where it gets really serious. Chris, is there anything wrong with the major stuff like the roof, the foundation, electrical plumbing or HVAC? No, man, it's in pretty good shape. It's just, uh, just that kitchen. Okay. Just that kitchen. So you haven't done anything in 10 years. Everything's in good shape. It's really, it just sounds like a lot of cosmetics. Have you had the roof looked at lately? No, no, man. We haven't had any issues at all, though. Okay. I mean, it's not leaking or anything? Nope. Oh, man. Yeah, it might be time to get that looked at after 10 years. I know even a 20-year roof is (laughs) two years in. (laughs) I I mean, I, I, I... just thinking about it. Okay. So here's the deal. We can move past that, Chris. I, I'm really glad, man. I just dropped a little doubt. I created a little doubt. Is my roof messed up? Mm-hmm. That? <laughs> no, I'm like, is my roof messed up? <laughs> right. Right. Now you're second guessing yourself. Here's the deal. What you guys didn't catch when I go out and look at it, or if I need a price reduction, guess what, man, we talked about your roof briefly, but you said it was good. I took your word for it. It's got two or three dings in, in, in a you know, square foot radius. It needs to be replaced. I can't finance this or my new homeowners can't. It's going to have to be replaced. Have you gotten a bid in the last 10 years to have that looked at? Now I just got my price reduction, baby. All right. So now my, my average 18000 per assignment on 53 average per month, now I just made that deal bigger. And, and that was just me bragging how serious this process is because most of y'all are getting five six seven per assignment our average in our academy with our students is like 11 to 12 and mine is over 18 grand every assignment doing 56 a month hey bryce how often are you renegotiating your deals very few and far between my friend because of this process beautiful let's keep going yeah and i mean if you do you're it's so insane for somebody that doesn't know so how do I, how do I was telling my mentoring student, you know, there are uh, very few people play chess. The reason why very few people play chess is because chess makes you think. And the people that do play chess, the large majority of them play chess like checkers. They're very reactive. They just stay, they, they, oh, well, you move here, I'm going to move there. They, they don't really see. Now, if you're a chess player, you can see from the outside in who is a chess player and who's not just based on how they're making their moves. So as a chess player, I love seeing the process of how you're walking them down the line, how you're you're putting these little things in their head. Okay, I'm not saying your house is a piece of shit. I'm just saying, have you thought about it? I'm oh, I'm not saying that your roof is leaking. I'm not saying that your roof is messed up. I'm just asking you, when's the last time that you had it checked? You know, I, I know that it hasn't given you any problems, but yeah, it's been 10 years. So blah, 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 blah. And you're just planting all these seeds to potentially go back at some point and say, okay, well, I might need to target this pain point. I might need to target that pain point. I might need to target that pain point, which I know you said that's step four, but nonetheless, you're, you're, you're basically getting all your bullets in line. You're, 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 you're marking with on their body. <laughs> this is where I'm going to fucking hit you. This is, you told me that this is what hurts the most. Here's the bullets that you're doing. Now we're getting ready to move into step number four, which is boom, motherfucker. The clothes. And I love how you said you're marking the body because I feel, and this is actually an analogy that my brand new sales coach Hant, had told me, because I told you she didn't teach me anything that I didn't already know. She just helped me get better. She used the analogy that our sellers or our clients 
our patients. We're the doctor. We're pointing out, we're going in for surgery and oh, that's the cancer. Oh, that's the cancer. Oh, that's got to get removed. How are you going to deal with that? And so yes. now I'm the doctor. Now you're, you're now you're almost forced to hire me because because yes. <laughs> I've been breaking this shit, dude. I'm telling you, I need to I need to offer that as a fucking service, <laughs> breaking down high level conversations for the average Joe. <laughs> but yes. you're right. You're 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 pointing out and you're saying this is what needs to happen. These are the areas that we need to diagnose. These are the areas that we need to go ahead and take a look at. And now not only do you have that but you also have the tools in place by asking them all the questions, by setting these, these little seeds that you're planting in their subconscious and they may not even be noticing that's going on. I mean, very few people, not to pat myself in the back, but still <laughs> very few people would have caught what you did with, hey, now we're talking about the bad. But that was such a sub level subconscious thing that you're just like, oh, let me just throw that out there here and all of a sudden, now their mind starts going this way. So you talked about building the relationship. You talked about you talked about going ahead and and basically getting all their main information, their form, and and finding out what their motivation is. Then you talked about uh, building. Uh, did I say this correct? No. Then you then you uh, go ahead and you build you bridge the gap. Did I get that correct? Yep. So you do the yes. form. You bridge, bridge the gap. Step at this point now you're saying okay guys yeah, we're now we're questions. yeah say that again hey, talk a little louder man we can't really hear you yeah you you kind of i think it was because i was over talking to you because i i i've got to get going here shortly but i want to make sure that you guys get all of this and and so now we're at defeating questions that step number four this is where you go in for the clothes or if you're the surgeon and you're working on the patient this is the this is the diagnosis real quick I talked about never walking properties briefly. I've not walked a property in over five and a half, six years. And I've only done three of those my entire career. But this is where virtually I'm running comps right here. It says, now, Chris, I can't work with everyone. And I'm picky about who I work with. Tell me a little bit more about what you're looking for when you sell this house today. That way I know if we're a good fit or not. So I can truly see if I can help you. And as soon as I ask that, I already know everything I need. I'm typing in the address. I've already actually done that. But now I'm just kind of pinpointing and looking, making sure my numbers that I've calculated are right on. Now I'm going in for the close. Well, Chris, I can appreciate you sharing that with me. You definitely have a lot on your plate. Let me see what I can do to eliminate some of that pressure. I'm curious, if I gave you cash, what's the absolute lowest amount you take for the house today? And now that 200 or that 150 is 150 or 100, right? So now we're starting to go into step four. We're starting to close. And then they're going to say, Chris, go ahead. If I'm curious, what's the absolute lowest amount you take for the house today? Well, the neighbor sold for 150. So we'd probably go for maybe a little bit less than that. Okay. So a little less than 150. I mean, tell me more about that. If I gave you cash, what's the absolute lowest amount you take for the house today? I'm going to re-ask it. I want him to give me his number. Right. So I'm going to say 140. Ah, 140. I'm curious, just where do you get that number rack? Right. Just because the neighbor sold and uh, we're, we're nicer than the neighbor and yada, yada. Mm. Okay. So the neighbor sold and you're nicer or your house is nicer. I'm going to rack it again. Nicer. I think our house is nicer. Okay. Okay. Did you have a chance to look at their house? Yeah. We go over there every weekend. Oh, wow. So you guys are pretty close. Right. So it probably tells me based on what we've talked about, his house needed a whole bunch of still probably needed some work if it sold that close to yours, huh? Right. Yeah. Hmm. So wouldn't you agree that's probably not the most accurate depiction of where your situation's at? I imagine so. You're asking a little less, but yours is worth a little bit more. You see what I'm going with this, Chris? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, man. So let, let me, let me just tell you at the end of the day, I want to give you as much as I possibly can. And, and I know that you've got a lot going on and I know you want as much as you possibly can get. So do you want the good news or the better news? How about the, how about the good news first? Okay. So the good news is this. I think 
I, I uptick, I think I could do your number or get very close to it. The better news is, is I'm willing to put my money where my mouth is and I'll drive over there, pay for an inspection before we sign anything. When would be a, <clears throat> excuse me. The better news is, is that I'm going to put my money where my mouth. The good news is I think that I'm interested in this house. The better news is, sorry, I spilled something on my copy here. Uh, the better news is, is I'm willing to put my money where my mouth is and I'm going to put money behind it. I'm going to drive over there. I'll pay for an inspection, but I really need to know if we close this thing in a week or two, how much time do you think you're going to need to move out? Uh, we would probably only need a week or two to move out. Okay. So we get title cleared in a couple weeks. You need a couple weeks. So we're talking what, 30, 40 days. Yeah, that'd be perfect. See what I did there. I ballparked it. I stacked it. And now his number and my number just added up and he didn't realize subconsciously and the sellers will do this. If he only needs a couple weeks, he doesn't realize titles already closed. Now I've just got my, I just bought myself four to six weeks that I can go market this freaking property, wholesale this deal for 10 grand more than everybody else. Mm -hmm. nice. So great. 30 to 40 days, we can do that. And if title's clear sooner, we can always close sooner. So let me ask you, when would be a good time so I can get my guys out there to take a look at the property? I can do tomorrow. Would you prefer the morning or the afternoon? Uh, I'd have to be after work. After work. So in the afternoon, what time do you get off of work? Five o'clock. Rack, 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 rack. rack. Five o'clock. Okay. Yeah. So it looks like I can do six or seven o'clock. Which would you prefer? Seven o'clock. Always give them two options. Seven o'clock. Fantastic. In the meantime, man, Chris, I look forward to working with you. I hope you have a great day, but I'm curious. Any big games or plans tonight to celebrate getting this house off your list? <laughs> I love it. Yes, absolutely. Step five. Step five is the warm down. You always warm with form. Go back. Any games you got to go watch, any parties you want to celebrate, bring back their family, bring back their recreation. Step five, leave the business at the door. Now you're walking out the door and they know, like, and love you. And you're, you're golden. You're golden. Beautiful. All right. So let me, let me go back. So you, you build the report through form. You add, you talk about the, the stuff that's important to them. If you just pay attention and you're going to eventually find their motivation, then you move into building the building, the bridging the gap, which is basically, all right, you know, we've talked about this. Now let's start talking about, some of the real estate stuff. Uh, you go ahead and you verify some of the, the their motivation. Hey, well, you know, according to this, 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 that. Now, now you move into step three, which is planting that that limited belief in their head, planting that doubt in their head. All right, well, we're about to talk about the, the dirty stuff. So basically that what that does is it opens them up to give you the shit. And as somebody said here in the comments before this, this thing went out that you actually, the genius about this is that you actually get that to come out of their mouth. Yes. So you're not walking the property saying that's fucked up. That's fucked up. That's fucked up. They're telling you what's wrong. They're telling you what needs updated. Then you go ahead <clears throat> and you start moving into the close. So you say, okay, well, if, if I were to come in and give you cash, what is the absolute lowest that you'd be able to take? And from there you start negotiating now more than likely more, most people, even with, the, even with the little stuff that you put in there are still going to give you a much higher number than they're willing to take just to see if they can get it anyway. So most people are going to give you some number and then you come back with some of those pain points and say, okay, well, based on the stuff you said, X, Y, Z, in this particular example, you use the neighbors and you said, yeah, well, what their neighbors sell for, okay, what I think this could be happening now in that whole process as a back, as a way to back end this stuff, you said, all right, that is awesome. How long do you think it will take to run title? Because once again, it comes out of their mouth as opposed to saying, hey, sir, it's going to take me 30 days to run title. You say, hey, what do you think? Oh, 30, 40 days or something. Great. No, no, no. Not run title. Not run title. You want to get them not to commit to the price. Get them to commit something past the price. So you want them to commit to how much time they'll need to move out. Okay. You want to get them to commit to something else because now they just previously committed without actually committing. Now I want to step back real quick. I, I, I heard you say something and, and I forgot to say something earlier. You said that most people, you know, want, will give you an inflated number. Most people don't know what their house is worth. I found after doing over 4,000 transactions in the last six and a half, seven years, right? Like most people don't even know what their house is worth. And so 
what they do is they go on Realtor Trulia Zillow. And I'm surprised Chris didn't say this because nine out of 10 role plays, that's where they go. But we know this business and he's trying to make it tough so you can get as much out of this. I appreciate that, bro. But nine out of 10 people, they're like, man, I don't know. I mean, they have it at 140. Can you give me 140? Oh, 140. Where did you get that number? Oh, Zillow. Do you know how that even works? That was your last golden nugget, guys, listening to this, because now nine out of 10 people don't know what their house is worth. Nine out of 10 people looked online and they think it's worth this. And now you can give them a limiting belief that eh, that's probably not accurate. And one of the key questions I always ask is, man, I mean, you would, wouldn't you agree after I tell them how Zillow works, you know, five mile radius, it's an average of homes similar to yours, not exactly like yours, but wouldn't you agree? I mean, your house isn't the same as the house on the other side of the highway, right? Whether it's bigger or better or bit worse or not, it's not. And there's always a highway or byway somewhere, a main intersection or thorough through, right? Thorough way. And so now they look at this other house, this other neighborhood, and they say, oh, shit, no, those are nice for house. Well, no, you know, I'll probably take 130. So that 140 becomes 130 when I second guess and ask that question again in that example, because nine out of 10 of them look at comps or they think. That is awesome. And guys, man, this has been straight fucking gold for all you motherfuckers out there that are wholesaling, for all you people out there that are dealing with sellers. Hey, Ryan Harper, I see you just joined us, man. How do we get that gold nugget? Because, uh, <laughs> man, we had a lot of a gold nugget. Oh, today. man, yeah, that was pretty awesome. I, I did rewatch my video, and they were putting yeah. the little gold nuggets and stuff because I was dropping shit. That was great. But anyway, guys, you should be here with a pen and a pad. And if you didn't and you need to come back and watch a replay, I highly suggest you watch the replay because there was a lot of really good information that we got, a lot of really good technical stuff, a really awesome script, and I just love the way that you break it all down. And then at the end, the warm down. At the end, hey, you know, whatever, let's talk about something else. It doesn't have to be about what just transpired, by the way, that's awesome. But all these little things that you just put in there that kind of makes them feel a lot better, because if you just – leave the, the room, leave the scenario. Oh, man, cool, thank you. Bam, bam, thank you, ma'am. Now she feels like shit. Now she feels used. Now she's just a, <laughs> now you were just there for what you wanted. As opposed to, all right, well, cool. Well, tell me about, you know, what, what other game you're going to watch? You got any big plans for the weekends? You and your wife, you and your kids, y'all doing anything, uh -huh. blah, 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 blah. You get them back to like you. And then at this point, you kind of, it, it almost, um, it starts diminishing the buyer's remorse type of scenario, whatever that translates into the seller side of things. So anyway, Bryce, man, you have been fucking awesome. I know you got to get going. So where can people find you? Where can people get this, this stuff? I know you mentioned something about a website where you have the uh, eight steps. Uh, obviously, people can hire you for coaching if they say, hey, this is something that I need a little bit more help with. Um, people can hire you for coaching. People can follow you on social media. And then you got your new, uh, your new podcast coming in. So where can people get a hold of you? Yeah, man, I appreciate that. So first and foremost, I, I, before I leave, Chris, BP, love you guys. Ryan Harper, <laughs> shout out to Propelio. Almost one year ago, I think yesterday or today, I found it. The very first gold nugget on Propelio was on a show just like this where Ryan and I were live dropping gold nuggets and Travion threw it out there. It's literally been one year to the day that the gold nugget was formed. So shout out to Propelio. Love those guys. Uh, in the meantime, um, <clears throat> man, I'm going to put in the comments in, in the uh, Facebook feed. I'll shout it out. I'm trying to figure out how to get the live over onto IG. I, I, I've seen it done. I don't know how to do that. But on uh, Instagram, if you follow me at Coach Sharpen, just put in there Coach Sharpen. You can find me. My name is Bryce McKinley, B-R-Y-C-E. Last name's McKinley, M-C-K-I-N-L-E-Y. If you have not taken action, you've been listening to these podcasts and you love what these guys are doing, make sure that you share their, download their podcast, like it, give a five-star review. And in the meantime, go find my podcast, host, 
flipping, wholesaling, real estate upside down. It'll be out in about a week to week and a half here. This is the last week of April, so it's not out yet, but it will be the most intense sales training in real estate you'll ever have. I promise you that I'm going to dig in and give it all away. And then last, but surely not least, if you're wanting to get started, don't just take my word for it. Go check out the wholesaling, holy forward slash free download wholesaling, holy forward slash free download. You can, you'll get an email, download the eight steps to every lead generate or our eight steps to our secret lead gen software. We've got a software that generates hundreds of leads that we have patented that goes out and joins thousands of Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn groups and post 10 times a day. It's like 10,000 virtual bandit signs every day in front of hundreds of thousands of people. We've got free hot leads. Go download that program, that eight steps to go learn how to do that manually. And now you've got free hot leads go freaking take action, go talk to people. Those are the two things you need. You need leads and you need conversations. You don't need anything else. You need buyers, bullshit. Go get the, con the contract and guys like Chris, BP, myself, when you bring us a contract, we'll make a deal happen. Contracts are, or buyers are the last thing you need. Go freaking get a lead and go have a conversation. Do something. Bryce, we really, Woo. really appreciate, man. This has been yes. just one of the most awesome information pack shows uh, i'm looking at the time i think this is officially our longest az For flip sure. guy show so <laughs> i know that you got to go i know that we started late uh we really appreciate the two hours of your time that you've given us all the value that you put out there all the information that you put out there um just going down and breaking down your process is something that if you are cold calling if you are uh if you are talking to individuals specifically in the business world get this fucking system and i think i'm gonna get it just so i can freaking leverage it in other conversations because that is freaking amazing 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 so bryce thank you once again so much for all all your time all your energy and guys if you guys are watching this once again if you guys are hearing this on a podcast if you guys are watching this on youtube if you guys are watching this on a replay make sure that you join us every single friday at noon arizona time where we will, me and Cashflow Chris, we have a different guest or just ourselves talking about every single different aspect of real estate. And if you've seen from this show, we don't sell anything. We don't pitch anything. All we do is just provide a lot of valuable information. So once again, guys, we want to remind you that it's all good, whatever you're doing, wholesale, fix and flip, do the stuff that you're doing. That's all fine. Money coming in is great. You want to make sure you flip for cash, but more and more importantly, you want to make sure that you hold for well. Yes, sir. See you guys next time. Have Thanks, a good one. God bless. Stay sharp. We'll see you at the top. Where, where I go? I thought it was fine.